So this will be the fifth one of these Milwaukee soldering irons that I've fixed. And they all seem to have the same issues and the same weak points. And I've seen lots of reviews online of people saying that they fail. Um, the main weak point is this plastic end that would normally have the the um, the actual tip in and the shroud. It melts. And this one started to melt, but it's kind of rescued it. But it melts, and as the top bends, it breaks off the um, end of the element. So this is this iron here that I've already got in pieces, ready to show you how to fix it. This is the element that I've removed. And this is a standard element. They won't sell you this at Milwaukee. They don't even tell you what it is, but I've found the match. And it's a same as what's used in a Heiko 900 or 907 soldier iron. And it's an, it's an A1321 element. And there it is there. This is the, how it comes from, from our friends in China. Now, if I show you this one, it's got four pins, basically, four conductors. The ones at the base are for the temperature sensing, and the ones slightly further up are the actual power for the, for the heat, for the element. And then on the end of the PCB, so there's a big PCB inside here, but we don't need to worry about that, the controls, everything. But it all comes out to this. So you've got under here, this would go to one of the pins, and it's a thermal fuse. So do not put your soldering iron anywhere near this because well, as soon as it gets hot, it fails. Um, and then on the board itself, we've got labeled uh, M1, N1, N2, sorry, H1, N1, N2, and H2. Now, H, I assume, is for hot because that's the, the actual heating element on the, on the solder element. Um, H1 isn't used. Uh, they've chosen to use a bypass, which is this thermal fuse, so on all the ones I've opened, H1 isn't actually used, and H2 has got a fused link on the actual PCB itself as well. So this one goes to one side of the heating element, and that one goes to the other side, and then the other two, N1 and N2, are your temperature sensors. So what you need to do is get this unsoldered, clean up the holes in the, in the PCB, carefully uncrimp this, um, you can obviously buy a new crimp if you want, but you can use them again if you're very careful and get that, that hole just right in there. And then um, what I'm going to do is I'll show you how to cut one of these to make it, it work. So the idea is you'll straighten all the legs out on this element and then you'll cut them so they are the same length as these ones. And you'll make sure that you're, when you look at it, it's like there's a, there's a line up the middle which I like to use as a reference. So there's a line, I don't know if you can see it, up the face of the element. And I use that as a reference point. So looking at that line, I make sure this one on the right is going to be the one that goes to the fuse. And these other three are going to be the ones that go to the PCB. So let me cut that and I'll be back. Okay, so I've cut the legs on the new one to the same length as the old one. And I've transferred over the, um, the heat proof insulation. It's important that you reuse that. Um, the old stuff's a bit too thick, it comes with the actual, with the new one. So now we're gonna attach these three pins here to uh, N1, N2 and H2. So we've got N1 on the, the lower elements, we've got M1 and N2, let's move this one out of the way. So N1 and N2 are the two lower ones and then this is going to be h2 and this is going to go to the fuse now i've recovered this crimping you know this little brass crimp but i would advise replacing that and i would also advise testing this fuse with a continuity tester and as i said don't go near this with your soldering iron literally you look at that with a soldering iron it's gonna gonna melt it so let me um solder this on and then i'll show you the next step so that's it soldered on. So we've got the this side going down to H2. So that's the um, that's the heat. The the uh, I think that's the actually the ground for the heat. And then we've got N1 and N2, which are our temperature sensors inside this element. And then we're going to crimp this on to the remaining heating element side. So let me just crimp that on. Okay, so the element is soldered on, this re-crimps, I've got my battery in this solder gun, and I'm going to give it a try. So what we should see when you turn it on is obviously the battery, will, the LEDs will come on, 
and then the green light will flash. If it's going to work. There we go. I should see some smoke as it's firing up for the first time. There we go. A bit of smoke coming off. We're all good. So the next thing to do is um, push this heat, this uh, insulation and heat proofing stuff back up over that crimp. Uh, refit the fat insulation there to the end over all of those pins and then um, put it back together. And then the next step is to address this. Now I'm going to do another video on how to fix the end, but I thought I'd do this sort of brief rundown on how to replace the element and I hope it helps somebody. Cheers.